everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Collar and welcome to day four of Inktoberfest. Today we're going to be covering distress sprays and we've got lots to show you. Here I have some of the um, metallic ones, so we have the brass, the pewter, there's a white. They come in all of the 60 uh, distress colours, so you can match them to any of your projects. Um, we also have a few other sprays as well. There's uh, some Distress Mica sprays which come in the brass, the pewter and the gold and I'll be showing you a few different tips of working with these as well. Now for today we're going to be working on some tags again and I've got a few here. I we'll be making a couple of different tags today. I'm going to start off just by showing you the difference of spraying with the tag. So you can mist from a distance which is going to give you a kind of light splatter as you can see there or I can mist super close which is going to give you far more of an ink kind of splodge. Um, Depending on the project you want, you can do either. If you're going to spray through a stencil, I suggest kind of spraying from a distance and building up that colour. Um, and then I'm just going to heat dry my Ranger Heat It tool, so I have um, have that there as well. But uh, the great thing about sprays is you can do them far away, you can do them close like that, or somewhere in between, just depending on what sort of density of spray you want to be able to get. Uh, you can also react these sprays with water. They're like regular distress inks. They're just in that spray form. Um, and so you can uh, do things um, that you would normally do with distress inks. You can spray them and whatnot. You can mix and match them with other distress rains distress products as well um, and you can see here some of the tags we'd already been creating and how those reds kind of look a little bit different even though they're in the same color uh, that spray tan is a little bit more intense than if you had spray for instance with a um, distress kind of marker as well so um, I want to show you a few techniques let's first of all start with stencils and I'm going to pick out one of my favorite stencils of the moment this Halloween script um, would work perfectly. Uh, Falling Stars is a great one as well, um, as is this Holiday Knit. And because I want to try out a couple of colours and show you how the colours interact together, I'm going to pick uh, this kind of cute little Holiday Knit for that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape my tag to the back of my um, stencil. What that means is my stencil can move around and I tend to kind of move it around and I get a better finished result because it's easy to move. The stencil is not going to move away from the tag, it's always going to stay in the same place and um, as you can see there I can move that stencil as much as I need to and I don't have any issues whatsoever. So a little top tip for you there. Um, so we're going to be working with two different spray stains on this holiday knit tag and I'm going to start off with one of the reds that I have here. I think this is the candied apple. So just a light spritz from above and now I'm going to work with some pine needles and I'm going to spritz the other half. Now of course you could mask different areas and get stripes in there. You could do all sorts of different things. Now before I lift up my stencil I just give it a couple of minutes to soak in and a light dry with my heated tool. Not too long because you don't want to melt that stencil but uh, just a little bit will work really well for you. So just kind of light dry, move it around lots, and then you can peel it off because if you have too much pulled ink on top of your stencil, sometimes it can make things go a little bit blurry. You could also take a kitchen towel over the top and uh, remove any excess ink. I can see one little splodge there, kind of in the middle, but this is only going to be a background. I'm going to do something on top of it if I'm going to use it. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. But also you can see there how easy was that just to do my um, tape to my stencil and then nothing moved around at all. So um, lots of different options. You can blend these together. You could add some Distress Ink over the top and get a seamless blend if you wanted to. Um, but I really like working with the sprays because you can get so many different effects from them as well. Now there's um, lots more things we can do with the sprays um, and e cleanup is super easy just use a kitchen towel um, and some water and off you go or a baby wipe. So for this one I want to make a background to spray onto so I'm going to use a couple of different distress oxide pads. I put down the easy clean mat onto my glass mat so that, that makes it really really easy to create a background and what you'll notice is ink pools really nicely on uh, this mat. Give it a quick spray with my Nuvo Light Mist Spritz Bottle and this might not kind of be the best colour combination to choose um, but it actually comes out really fun and I kind of like some of those darker areas. Um, I was mentioning, so I thought I had sound on this but I didn't, um, which is why I'm voicing it over but Tim has a saying that you get what you get and you don't throw a fit and that's kind of always what I think when I ink blend of you kind of take the risk particularly if you use colours that are going to create mud. 
And here I am just drying it with my Ranger Heat It tool. I just wiped my surface down with some kitchen paper. And I like using this tool because if there's any pooled water on there, this isn't going to move it around. All it does is dry it. It doesn't then create a load of movement and all the water moves all over the place. I get all of those fun textures and patterns in there as well. So I've got that beautiful chalkiness there of the Distress Oxides. I absolutely love. And look at that vibrancy of the kind of light yellow limes. You've got the blues, the purples. Actually, you don't really notice those muds, but there's some fun things in there. Now, I want to take um, another one of my uh, newer stencils, which is the uh, Falling Stars, if I can get it off the book ring, of course. And I keep all my stencils from Tim on book rings, the small on one set and then the large on another set. And then I have labels that I've made. Um, I either write on there the set number or I... Uh, write the name of the stencil so it's easy to know what I have and of course for linking up in those video descriptions for you. So I've just given this a spritz with some peacock feathers and I gave it a second for it to soak in but look how pretty those stars are and how they pop on top of the oxides. Now because the oxides that pigment dye fusion that we discussed yesterday you can layer things on top and that pigment is going to create a layer that makes um, your dye stand out even more on top of there. Um, again, just dry it with that Ranger Heat It tool, super, super easy. And cleaning my stencils, I just run them under the tap um, really quickly afterwards. If there's some pulled areas of ink, I just might lighten them up or you can sit and wait for them to dry. Uh, but on video, I tend to be pretty impatient and I just mop that up with some kitchen towel. And it gives me some lighter and darker areas as well. Now, the other thing I want to take is the picket fence. Now, this is a white. So if you were to use it regularly on dark cardstock, you're not going to see it because it's dye based. But if I layer some oxides underneath and some other inks, I can put it on top. And there you can see how you get that wonderful white pop of color on there. It kind of reminds me of a galaxy background. So if you're making galaxies and things and you've blended all your inks in there, this is a great way to add those white flecks on top. Um, and I kind of find it pretty low mess. I did wish I had the new splatter guard from Tim. Um, I didn't have one. I hadn't been able to get my hands on one before this video. But that is great because you can put it in different directions. It folds down flat. But there you can see those lovely white specks, which if you're doing galaxies or you want to just add a little bit of interest to that oxide background, it's super, super easy. So white picket fence is probably one of those sprays that I would recommend the most. The other thing we have are these... Um, the brass and the silver in the Distress sprays. So they do have um, some pigment or some mica in them of some sort. And so you need to shake them, but do not shake them up and down, shake them around and around. Either hit them on your hand or just um, shake them around and around. And you'll hear that silver ball go and therefore you um, just keep shaking just for maybe 30 seconds. They don't need a huge amount, um, but you just want to make sure that all of those different pigments and things are mixed together. Um, the other thing is that stops the straw becoming too clogged and this is the pumpkin um, one. Now my silver one I'd used the other day and clearly I hadn't cleaned it enough. Uh, what I will end up doing is just putting it in a bowl full of Dawn um, and then I um, just put a pin in that nozzle and it works fine. So I ended up going with the brass into my pumpkins which is probably quite appropriate. I had some thicker and thin areas because of how close I was to it so you can see there how you get more or less definition. And you're better off doing more lighter coats, in my opinion, than doing less heavy coats. So again, quick dry with that heat it tool. Again, to clean it off, run it under the tap. To clean up my easy clean mat, I just run it under the sink again. Um, and it's nice and clean. And I just dry it, our sink is separated. I kind of put it between the two uh, so that I can dry it really, really easily. So I'm loving playing with these Distress sprays. I really don't get them out enough. Um, I've had them for a while and I must admit until I saw Tim using them recently at uh, the Cincinnati Stamp Away, I hadn't really played with them but I was excited that we were doing them as part of Inktoberfest. Now I'm going to work with those My Chemist sprays, same thing, round and around, bang it on your hand, do not shake it up and down, ideally also store them on their side so that the tube does not get full of that mica powder and then you have to go and clean it out. So again I'm going to use a pretty um, stencil from Tim. This is Halloween script. Everything is linked in that description below for you. I was having a day of dropping everything. Um, but this is the uh, brass again and the mica spray. And what I wanted to do was spray something back to back with the mica and with the distress spray. Both in the brass you can see the difference between the two colours. Uh, and when I lift this up you'll see um, even though they're called exactly the same they're very, very different. The mica spray has more of a sheen to it. I would say that the liquid is more translucent 
than the Distress Spray. But there you can see, isn't it still a pretty effect? And I think it looks super spooky for Halloween. You could do a light blend behind, you could have spritzed a background, you could have smushed your inks, all sorts of things you could do. And then you could put that spray over the top and you would have a beautiful background to stamp on. Um, I have linked the Ranger Heat It tool, the tags, all those things that you need in that description below for you. So you should be able to find them super, super easily, um, whatever takes your fancy. Of course, we do also have a tonic code today. So check out the blog post that's in the description below or thehedgehoghollow.com and you can check out today's coupon from Tonic. Uh, we'll also have lots of pictures and things. I was also mentioning that if you have the Tim Holtz splatter brush, you could spray some ink onto it and splatter super easily. I find that's a lot lower mess than putting inks down and then having to pick it up and things like that as well. So uh, kitchen towel is great for picking up any undried ink if you are impatient. Um, but you can see there how different the two are between uh, whether you use the distress, distress spray stain on the right or if you use the Mica Mist there on the left. So uh, again, we'll link all those different things up for you. The Mica Mist, I believe, come in sets of three um, of the three different shades, whereas the Distress Spray Stains, you buy individually. I've never seen those in multi-pack, but we will make sure everything's there for you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and visit the blog as well. And there's some other videos there that you might enjoy and we hope to see you again very soon. And if you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and that subscribe button and bell will make sure that you get future Inktoberfest and beyond videos. We'll see you very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.